Hello everyone, welcome to the Michigan Referee Committee's weekly video. This week we're going to talk about advantage. When you decide to give an advantage, what are some of the things that you think about? One of the considerations may be the number of attackers versus the number of defenders. In other words, if you have more attackers than defenders, then there may be a good reason to give an advantage. On the other hand, if you have more defenders than the attackers, then you may not want to give an advantage. That's a good way to think about it, but that's not the only way to think about the number of defenders versus attackers. Let's take a look at the video. Three, and the Rapids can bring it away. Rubio and Bassett. And still with Bassett. Now with Shinishiki, has he got the legs? A cross goal, and there's nobody there to tidy up. Another big... In this video, there were three defenders. In comparison, there was really one attacker who could get the ball. But the referee decides to give an advantage. And this was a good advantage, even though the attacking team did not actually score a goal from this advantage. The reason why this was a good advantage was because, despite the fact that there were three defenders, they were flat. They were moving backwards. On the other hand, the attacker had speed. Attacker had a lot of speed. And then they had a lot of space. So speed plus space, that's what the attacking team had. Defenders, as I said earlier, was moving backwards, which is slower than moving forward. They were flat, which means that just one pass can penetrate this defensive line. So when you think about advantage, it's not just about the number of defenders versus attackers. You want to pay attention to the structure of the defensive line. 